Now we are going to talk about various vectors for cloning the gene of interest and in this lesson we are going to talk about the vectors for cloning the genes in plants and in animals. Okay. When I talk about in plants and in animals, we are dealing with aspect where we talk about disarmed pathogen. It's like sending a militant or a terrorist with a gun, but instead of bullets inside that gun, you have put flowers. Okay, that would be quite a funny instance, but why I'm saying this? We have a pathogen, pathogen has the innate tendency to infect okay? and if the pathogen happens to be a virus then it has the innate tendency again I would say to infect in such a way that it alters the genome. It has the ability to get incorporated in the genome, it sends its gene inside and then it copies itself that means they have what we are seeking in a vector. We can use it as a vector, but we have to disarm it itself from the disease that it is causing. We have to disarm that gene which is causing the disease and instead we put our gene and get our work done. This is the principle of having disarmed pathogen. I would tell you an example. In plants, we have the example of agrobacterium tumefaciens that is a kind of bacteria responsible for causing crown gall disease or otherwise you can call it that it is responsible for causing tumors in the plant. In the same way there are certain retroviruses in humans and animals where they have the ability to make the normal acting cells cancerous. Okay. Now, what do these pathogens do? They go and infect the organism, okay, their host organism. They get inside the DNA of that organism when I am talking about the virus. They are going to cut the DNA, they are going to get fixed in that genome and produce their proteins whichever are required for their own sustenance. That is what they do. Now, supposedly we cut that gene out of the retrovirus and at its place we put our gene of interest then the virus would do the same thing but it will not cause the disease and instead would work as our own agent it would work for our desire okay so it would act as our vector so that is a disarmed pathogen the pathogen has been disarmed or it has been robbed of its pathogen activity pathogenic activity its disease causing ability and instead our purpose is being solved as we give our gene of interest to that pathogen okay and that has the innate ability of infecting so it would infect the cell and we will get what we desired out of the cell now same as in the case of agrobacterium tumefaciens it has the ability to infect that is its nature but it has one plasmid that is known as tumor inducing plasmid. Now as you know this plasmid has the ability of self replication because it is a plasmid this TI stands for tumor inducing. Okay? So the tumor inducing plasmid would be disarmed the gene which is responsible for inducing tumor in the plant cells that it goes and infects will be cut and instead our required gene would be put over there. Now the bacteria would go and infect the plant but instead of producing tumor over there because its TI plasmid has been altered it will produce our desired gene. So in a way we have made these two organisms which were otherwise pathogenic in nature as our own vectors and these have a lot of potential in them acting as a vectors. This particular bacteria has a lot of potential in plants okay acting as a cloning vector in plants and these retroviruses have a huge field and a bright future as I would say to act as cloning vectors in animals. So this you have to keep in mind what TI plasmid is where it is found it is found in agrobacterium tumefaciens we disarm this TI plasmid we put our gene of interest and it becomes our vector. In the same way we have the case of retroviruses where we disarm their gene which is responsible for causing the disease or which is uh, pathogenic in nature and instead we put our gene of interest and hence make it also as a vector. So this you have to keep in mind that how we use various organisms that have been disarmed, how this principle of disarmed pathogen is used in vector 
for cloning okay so we have used them as cloning vectors as well this is all in this lesson